So my parents have gaslit me my whole life, or gaslighted. I think you could say it either way. And uh, I started driving for lifts again. And I was really having a good time. And it so reminds me of my relationship with my parents. Because, like, you know, I'll go to dinner with my parents. I love food, you know? And so, like, we'll go eat food. It could be a good time. I'll, like, talk to them and tell them about, like, what's going on with me, you know? And then, they're all, I always come to these situations that are just so hard to deal with and I'm now I'm realizing because I just started driving Lyft again after a few year break and I've been driving Lyft for a month and I'm realizing that I'm being gaslit by Lyft and by Hertz <sighs> It's nice to know that if you take the time to share information that's important to me, and considering that I make a contribution to Lyft and to uh, Hertz, like I, when my Hertz cars, I return them better than when I got them. I wax them, I make them nice because I'm using them for work, so I need them to be nice, and they don't do any of that at, at Hertz. And what ended up happening is I had a brand new car. It was great. I had to go take it in. And the car that they gave me was shit. It was the same kind of car, but it was older. And I needed to work three hours, like hard. Like I was busting my ass because I wanted to get to work. And it was such a hard three hours of work from six o'clock in the morning to 9 a.m. Not to mention that I was starting work at that time at 3, 4 a.m. So there was no way that was going to happen. This car, I picked it up. It had no charge on it. I've learned in my life that I'm just better off if I don't put myself in positions that just are so frustrating it's hard to even handle like you just want to like i mean i don't punch the wall you know what i mean but when i was younger that's the kind of thing that would happen like my mom she doesn't let up like she's she's not right it's it's you should not treat anybody the way that she's treated me and other people in these moments where she just pushes and pushes. And so this Lyft situation, I'm trying to tell Lyft what's going on. I'm trying to tell Hertz what's going on. And nobody cares. And the responses that I'm getting are like devastating me. Like I'm not being heard even in the slightest. And then I'm being lied to. Like. And it's just the easiest thing in the world, you know? Like. I. I make contributions. I should get something for my contributions. If I'm paying $1,500 a month plus insurance, extra insurance that I'm buying. I deserve some level of customer service and I shouldn't have to pay for a car when I can't even use it. And I certainly shouldn't have to be detailing out a car myself that's a new car and it's thrashed so badly that when it rains, you can't even see out the windshield when the windshield, like especially at night when the lights glare off the windshield. It's like, oh my gosh. And then when they first gave it to me, they're spending all this time like, oh, we have to vacuum it. And I'm telling them I need to clean the outside and the windows. And they're like, oh, no, no, we're going to vacuum it. They give it to me with no charge. I said that there's a they have chargers. What's plugged into the chargers? The manager's car that he's not even driving. He's not even using it. And they and no and they knowing that I was coming to pick up the car, they couldn't go put my car on charge. 
so that I wouldn't be stuck in South LA where I don't live over an hour from where I live and I have to charge for an hour before I can spend an hour driving home. And after all this, the car that I had breaking, not my fault. It was brand new. It only had 3,500 miles on it and then it wouldn't take a charge. Like, what am I supposed to do? It's not okay to wrong people like that. Like, I'm, I'm making my best effort doing something that I enjoy doing, and they're ruining it. Like, I don't enjoy it. I was having fun. For a month, I was seriously having fun. And then, and the thing that's, like, really got me, like, pissed right now, like, so pissed off, is I was working hard all this month. I wanted to get platinum status on Lyft. And that's hard to do because there's only so many hours a day that your earnings counts towards getting points for platinum status. And I was waking up early in the morning trying to drive those hours every day. And I got, it takes about 1200 and something dollars that you have to learn earn in these few hours per day. And I was within i think less than a hundred dollars of it and i wasn't even thinking i mean what could i have done really other than just been able to work that one day if i would have been able to work i would have made the hundred dollars that would have given me the platinum status and so i'm like so upset about that and then i'm telling my parents about it and they're kind of just they're acting like they're not understanding they, they don't really seem to care like they don't anytime i'm really upset about something they don't know how to handle it like they can't just just be there for me <laughs> just be like oh man that sucks you know <sighs> and it just makes me like i go from being upset about something and then talking to my parents, like my mom or my dad or both. And then I literally like, I'm overwhelmed. Oh. my back is starting to bother me because like that's another thing like I need to avoid this kind of stress because this kind of like anger and stress it just fucks with my pain and my health and it's not good you know like I'm not trying to be a victim That's, that's how, how, that's part of not being a victim is just don't put yourself in situations like this. You know, is it, do I need to stay away from my parents, like limit my time with them to not be a victim? Yes. Because how am I, how, like how else, like if I'm upset about something, do I need to just stay away from my parents? Yeah. That's how you're not a victim. Like if you know that you go into a situation, if you know how the other person is going to handle it and you know that it's going to really bother me, if I, I know that, that it's not going to be good, then I need to not put myself in that situation. And then lift. Same situation there. Like, if I know, uh, ow, if I know that, uh, ow, I cut myself. 
if I know that at some point this job is just going to suck and put me in this kind of mood for who knows how long, then maybe I shouldn't be doing this job. But at the same time, like, I really enjoy it. But... I, So I just try to focus on something positive, which is I got approved for the physical therapy. I've been going through so much hell trying to get the proper physical therapy. I got approved. I think this is like really good and I'm going to be doing a lot better. And of course, when I went to tell my mom this and my dad, and I'm like, I'm so excited. Like, this is finally, I'm getting the help that I needed. And they just look at me with that blank fucking stare. Like, honestly, I, my mom called me a hypochondriac years ago. Because, and I'm thinking like, why would you even say that? And I think it's because of my back pain. Because I'm always talking about how much pain I'm in. And like the way she looks at me, it's like she doesn't fucking believe me or she doesn't care. And I don't understand. It's like the greatest thing in the world is happening for me. And she doesn't give a fucking shit. She can't even act happy for me. Fuck these people. You know, the one thing good is that, you know, they want to feed me and they, you know, all this kind of stuff. But even that, even just going to get food can be so fucking stressful. My needs are constant. If it isn't eating something, like that's the only need that they seem to care about. It's like, oh, we'll feed you. But anything else, you're on your own. Fuck, dude. You know, it's like I can feed myself and not go through this much fucking distress. <sighs> 